Assalamu alaikum my dear students today we are going to discuss about the life cycle of Paxinia actually so actually the life cycle of Paxinia completes into two hosts so now host what are the two hosts of the Paxinia in which the Paxinia completes its life cycle so first host is a wheat plant wheat plant it means the paxinia is the parasite of wheat plant and also berberis vulgaris this also known as berberi berberi plant so the first host of paxinia is a wheat plant and the second host of paxinia is berberis vulgaris so out of these five stages the first three stages completes in this uh, uh, host which is known as actually a wheat plant it means uridinial stage complete in the wheat plant talial stage completes in the wheat plant and basidial stage also present in the wheat plant when the basidial stage ends and produce the basidiospore now basidiospore will move on the second host which is known as berberi actually so to understand better i can make here these are the haploid nuclei in the basidial stage and they are producing the sterigmata and these sterigmata give rise the spores and these spores are known as basidial spore or basidiospores these spores are known as basidiospore and each basidiospore is a haploid spore so we can write here these are basidio spores all the basidio spores are haploid spores haploid spores actually so these basidio spores are now entering into the next uh, host which is known as berberi actually so how uh, this will enter into the next phase or a next host these basidio spore when release and these spores will fall on the leaf of the berberi plant so how for example these are the spores of the paxinia and the basidial stage so that why these are known as basidio spores basidio spores so now we are going to discuss when actually transport these spores on the leaf surface of the next host which is known as berberi plant for example this one is the leaf of berberi plant and this is the cuticle of the plant leaf leaf uh, it is the cuticle of the leaf of the berberi berberi plant this one is epidermis this one is cuticle and below the epidermis there are some mesophyll cells which are present below the epidermis for example these are the mesophyll cells when these spores for example this one is a basidio spore but we are going to discuss the stage which is known as pycnial stage so actually this pycnial stage is carrying out in the next host which is known as berberis vulgaris and this is the leaf of berberis vulgaris or a berberi plant this is the basidio spore when they fall on the leaf of the berberi plant it start germinating and producing a germ tube so this one is a basidio spore basidio spore this one is a germ tube and 
Now this germ tube is penetrating in the cuticle. So this upper layer is a cuticle and this is a germ tube. This germ tube is penetrating in the cuticle. When this reaches to the cuticle, then this uh, germ tube will penetrate in the next layer which is known as epidermis. So when this these are the epidermal cells. These are the epidermal cells. After penetrating the cuticle, this germ tube penetrate inside the epidermis. When this germ tube penetrate in the epidermis, then this germ tube produce four to six cells. So these are one, two, three, four. These are four to six cells. Actually, these four to six cells are produced by this germ tube, which is penetrating from cuticle to epidermis. And when it reaches to the epidermal cells, it divides and produces four cells. Each of these four cells produce small hyphae. So, in all directions, so these are small hyphae and these small hyphae are produced from these cells which are actually 4 to 6 in number <coughs> which are producing as a result of the vegan of this germ tube and this germ tube produce 4 cells and each cell give rise a small hyphae which are growing in the all direction. When these hyphae are produced actually these hyphae produce small structures and these structures are known as hostoria. Actually, these hostoria are moving inside these mesophyll cells to get the food for absorption. So, these are hyphae. So, after the hyphae, these branches are known as hostoria. Hostoria and these hostoria are now penetrating inside these cells and these cells are known as mesophyll cells. These are known as mesophyll cells. And inside the mesophyll cells, these hostoria are penetrating and these hostoria will absorb the food content of the mesophyll cells for their absorption because of all the fungi are absorptive in a nutritional mode. So these hostoria are actually penetrated in the mesophyll cells. And these hyphae which are giving rise these hostoria, actually these hyphae are, these are the hyphae and these hyphae are monokaryotic. What do you mean monokaryotic? For example, this one is a hyphae and this contains single nucleus. And this due to presence of single nucleus, it is known as monokaryotic. This is known as monokaryotic hyphae. So all the hyphae with hostoria are monokaryotic hyphae. So what will happen when these hostoria and monokaryotic hyphae are produced? For example, these are the cells of the plant leaf. And these are the hyphae actually which are present and these are the monokaryotic hyphae. These hyphae will grow in this fashion. These hyphae are growing in this fashion. When these hyphae grow and produce other hyphae, these smaller hyphae grow and produce other hyphae. So, two types of hyphae are produced. This whole structure is actually a flask-like and this whole structure, which is a flask-like structure, this is known as pycnidia. Pycnidia. So, inside this pycnidia, two types of hyphae are present. One type of these hyphae, actually these are the long hyphae. So it's right here. This pycnidia, this whole pycnidia contain two types of hyphae. Number one are these hyphae and these are long hyphae. These are long hyphae. 
and this pycnidia this whole pycnidia actually also contain small hyphae like this these are smaller hyphae these are also hyphae but these are smaller hyphae because this whole structure which is actually looking like a floss it is known as pycnidia sorry this is known as pycnidia and this pycnidia contain two types of hyphae one are one type of hyphae are long hyphae and other type of hyphae are present at the center and these are smaller hyphae so these are number second hyphae and known as smaller hyphae and there is an opening inside this whole structure which is known as pycnidia and this opening is known as ostiole so actually ostiole is used for the release of pycnospore so now what are the functions of these long hyphae and small hyphae actually these smaller hyphae are involved in the formation of these spores so actually these are spores and these spores are produced by these smaller hyphae these smaller hyphae and these spores which are produced from these smaller hyphae are known as pycnio spore these are known as pycnio spores and these are the larger hyphae actually and these larger hyphae are actually involved in the fusion as well as reproduction and they are involved in receiving these pycnio spore so that's why these hyphae are known as receptive hyphae these hyphae these longer hyphae are known as receptive hyphae so it means these pycnio spores are produced from basidio spore but in the life cycle of the pycnia the first three stages are present in the first host which is known as bead but the other two stages complete by the pycnia are in the second host which is known as berberi plant so after the this pycnial stage now we are going to discuss about this last stage which is known as aerial stage so in the pycnial stage we have discussed that inside the plant cells a small flask like structure is produced which is known as pycnidia and pycnidia contains small hyphae and long hyphae so these are long hyphae and these are the smaller hyphae these are smaller hyphae and these smaller hyphae are involved in the formation of spores and these spores are known as pycnio spores this these spores are actually known as pycnio spores so these are pycnio spores these are larger hyphae and these larger hyphae are also known as receptive hyphae receptive hyphae and these are smaller hyphae smaller hyphae and these smaller hyphae are produced in the spores and these spores are known as pycnio spore so for example this one is a receptive hyphae and this pycnio spore will migrate at this portion of the receptive hyphae and when this uh, pycnio spore will migrate so before the division inside the nucleus of this pycnio uh, spore division take place and it become multi nucleate so this multi nucleated fuse with this portion and before the fusion this receptive hyphae is mononucleated or a monokaryotic so before the fusion it is a monokaryotic 
बट वेन दिस पिकनियोर विल फ्यूज आफ्टर द फ्यूजन दिस होल हाइफी इज नाउ बिकम डाइकेरियाटिक हाइफी सो आफ्टर द फ्यूजन इट बिकम डाइकेरियाटिक डाइकेरियाटिक हाइफी सो इट इज एक्चुअली प्रेजेंट इन द सेंटर ऑफ द लीव और द चैम्बर ऑफ द स्टोमेटा बट नाउ दीज डाइकेरियाटिक हाइफी produce some other chains of cell in the below or in the lower epidermis of the leaf for example this one is the lower epidermis of the leaf of the variegated plant and this one is upper epidermis of the leaf of the plant these dicaryotic hyphae will make a chain of cell below the lower epidermis so this one is a lower epidermis and this is the lower portion this is the upper epidermis and this is the lower portion of the epidermis so i can label it this one is upper epidermis and this one is lower epidermis so this is a chain of cell and this chain of cell again divide and this chain of cell again divide to produce another chain of cell one chain of cell is produced at the upper side and this upper side cells are larger in size these cells are actually larger in size and this chain of cell is actually producing the two layers of the cell one layer of cell is present at the upper and this upper layer of cell are involved in the formation of small spores and these spores which are producing at the larger cells these spores are known as ichiospore these spores are known as ichio spores because we are discussing about the axial stage so that side the spore produced by this stage are known as axial spores below the chain of cell there are some smaller cells and these smaller cells are known as juncture cells these smaller cells are known as juncture cells so after some time these this layer of juncture cell uh, cells become disintegrate and due to disintegration of this of these cells due to disintegration of these cells these all tissue spores become separated from each other but these are immature spores these are not mature so, uh, spores so for keeping and uh, these spore inside the leaf another layer is produced exactly at the point of the juncture shells layer and this layer is known as peridium this layer is known as peridium but this is also a loose wall and it will also become disintegrate but still these spore which are known as tissue spores are immature for uh, so these spore also need some extra time for their maturation but this peridium will disintegrate and when this peridium will disintegrate then another layer is produced at the point of the peridium and that layer is known as acidium acidium so when this layer will disintegrate all these acio spores will come out from the leaf and the wind action will disperse these spores and these spores are known as acio